All right. So, um, change of pace, new topic, right? Trusses. We're going to look at trusses. Trusses, you recognize these uh, from either roofs, bridges. It's a, it's a frame with these individual members uh, that take on the, the weight of the roof or the weight of the um, bridge. And they can be in a number of different um, uh, geometries, uh, set up a number of different ways um, for, for many reasons uh, that we won't get into. Uh, but the main thing is they, they support the weight um, of a roof or a bridge, and it kind of distributes it. Um, and each member, you know, c can take on some force. All right, they are they're individual members that are connected at the joints, right? Individual members that are connected at the joints. They can be connected by pins. Here's a gusset plate, uh, but however they're connected, we'll talk we'll talk about that. Um, they they act like pins. Okay, so let's look at some trusses. Here are some assumptions that we're going to make for trusses, which are pretty good assumptions. Uh, to make. Th these aren't uh, far out. Uh, we're going to assume that all the loads are applied at the joints, meaning uh, this roof is not distributed throughout on this side of the member. Uh, we can set it up so that it, it is connected and any of the any all of the weight or any of the loads or any of the forces are only felt at the joints, not here in between joints. So all the loads are applied at the joints, and all the joints act like pin joints. Um, it could be a pin. Um, even if it's not exactly a pin, we can assume uh, it acts like a pin. And the weight of the members is negligible, so we don't have to worry about the weight of this member. The weight of the member, <clears throat> this member inside of a truss, is much, much, much less than any of the other forces uh, acting on here. So we can neglect the weight of the members. Okay, um, so the weight of the members is negligible compared to the loads. Also, one other thing, uh, if we can assume all the joints act like pin joints, and at a pin joint, there's no reaction moment. So, all of those joints, whether they're really pins or not, all of those joints, there's no um, moment... Uh, at those joints and because of those assumptions because of those assumptions because every member of the truss is pinned and pinned with nothing in between meaning no forces in between uh, th then what is that we just got through with um, talking about that members that are pinned on both ends and nothing in between are two force members all of these are two force members all of the members of a truss are two force members. So the force is pin to pin. The force inside each member, the internal force is acting pin to pin, it, which is along the member. The force inside is acting along the member. Each member of a truss is just either in tension or compression. Each member is in tension or compression. Tension is pulling, right? All, all, tension is always pulling. Compression is always pushing. Right, either it's like a rope. Right, tension is pulling like a rope. Compression is pushing. Okay, so anyway, we went through all of that just to say every member in the force is a two-force member, and we know that those forces have they they act along the members, either in tension or compression. So now we're going to start trying to solve for, hey, what's the force in this member, and is it in tension or compression? 
you know? Hey, what's the force in this member? And is it in tension or compression? So how can we do that? So here's our process. Here's our process. The whole truss, uh, kind of as if it was a solid truss. Like, don't don't worry that it's composed of lots of individual members. Just take it like a, a large, ob solid object, and it's in equilibrium, right? That whole truss is not moving left or right. Is it? That whole truss is not moving up or down. We hope not. That whole truss is not twisting. So we can draw a solid whole free body diagram of the truss, and we can sum the forces in x equals zero. We can sum the forces in y equals zero. We can sum the moments about any point is equal to zero. So your first step is probably going to look at it as a whole, and maybe you can solve for what's happening at some of the... Is there a rocker down there? Is there, is there a, a pin down there? We can solve for the whole uh, force and some reaction forces. But then also, every joint is in equilibrium. Right? Every joint is in equilibrium. This joint, you know, maybe we'll call it joint B, it's not moving left, right, up, down. So if it is in equilibrium, <clears throat> then at any joint... Uh, we can sum the forces in x equals zero, and we can sum the forces in y is equal to zero. It's just a point, so there's no there's no moment. Everything is acting through the point, so there's no moment equation. But for every joint, we can sum the forces in x equals zero, we can sum the forces in y equals zero. Okay? And let me mention that also every section is in equilibrium. So if we wanted to break this up into sections, you know, the left half is in equilibrium, so for the left half, you know, we could sum the force in x equals zero, sum the force of y equals zero, sum the moments equals zero. All right. So that is that is the method of joints. So we're gonna sorry, that is the method of sections. Uh, but we're gonna start with the method of joints. All right. We're gonna start with the method of joints. So here's our our process. We look at the whole free body diagram. All right. Sum the forces in x equals zero. Sum the forces in y equals zero. Sum the moments about any point is equal to zero. Then we go and we look at one joint. And we can sum the forces in x equals zero, sum the forces in y equals zero. Uh, try to start with a joint that has only two unknowns, right? Start with a joint that only has two unknowns because we have two equations, two unknowns. You can solve for two equations. I like to um, guess tension first. You know, you can do whatever you want. And generally in this class, you can guess whatever you want to begin with. If your answer comes out negative, you guessed wrong. All right, so I always like to guess tension. If my answer comes out negative, I guessed wrong. It was compression. So the way I do it, tension is positive, compression is negative. Uh, but in but but the real thing, the real case is uh, negative means you guessed wrong. All right, negative means you guessed wrong. All right, and I'll show you how to do it. But if your answer comes out negative. Um, I don't want you to write your answers as positive or negative. I want you to write your answers as parentheses T for tension, parentheses C for compression. All right, parentheses T. So when you go, go get ready to box in your final answers, um, denote whether it is in tension or compression. All right, so anyway, you went to one joint that has two unknowns. Then you just, and I like to think of it as just hopping from joint to joint, hop, hop to another joint and sum the forces in x equals zero, sum the forces in y is equal to zero. All right, And then hop to another joint, hop through the truss until you've solved for what it's asking for or maybe solved um, for, maybe it asked for the whole truss. Okay, so that's a good process. Occasionally, you can do some things out of order if you want to. Sometimes you don't have to look at the whole free body diagram. Um, the more comfortable you are with these, the more you can see, oh, if I just want to get to that member, I can just start here and, and make a couple of hops. You know? But a good process 
for method of joints is to look at the whole free body diagram, three equilibrium equations, and then look at every joint, two equilibrium equations at every joint. All right? So let's put this into practice. Let's try it out. 